Spider-Man 2002 is a Thanksgiving movie. To beat an old lady with a stick to get these cramps. <laughs> Newman. Do what you need to with her, then broom her fast. Just keep your mouth shut about stuff you don't understand. Harry Osborne. I'm sorry I'm late. Work was murder. You're bleeding. This video is brought to you by Diamond Art Club. Howdy. So I just got back from vacation and I was trying to decide what project to do this week. And I was scrolling through the Pinterest and all of the potential projects I had planned, trying to find something that would spark my fancy. And then I realized, of course, Spider-Man. You see, a couple of months ago, like at the beginning of the summer, I bought materials to make a Spider-Man dress. And then I just didn't do it. I can't even remember why I didn't do it. And that was when, dear viewer, I stumbled upon this Spider-Man red carpet look again which reminded me of the dress project that I intended to do so let's do it let's make a spider-man dress So in terms of design, basically what I'm going for here is like a runway or red carpet look but amped up to the extreme because it's me. I actually did a ton of iteration on this design, way more than usual, because whenever I first designed it in the summer, I wanted it to be a shorter, more casual dress because I really wanted it to be different from my initial inspiration. But now that it's colder out, I'm a more experienced dressmaker and I've just been indulging in my every dramatic whim lately, I decided to go for a full gown look. Again, while I absolutely adore Bella May's red carpet Spider-Man gown, and I am certainly inspired by it, I am trying to go in my own direction here. So the silhouette I went for is a little bit more costumey, and also I suppose inspired by a variety of 1950s and Victorian ball gowns because I am absolutely feral for some of those. It took me a few tries to get something I was pleased with and something I thought I could actually make because this is my first gown ever, but I eventually settled on an off-the-shoulder bodice with a long mermaid-style skirt with long gloves and a weird collar slash capelet piece, basically trying to emulate the top of his suit and the little gliding web Spider-Man has in some of his iterations. And also because I really want it to read as Spider-Man, I'm also going to add some raised webbing details in some areas, all of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit. Hi, it's day one, so I'm gonna be working on patterning and drafting and that sort of thing. I've got a nice selection of fabrics here that I purchased months ago, and you know, just, I like my selection. It's a good selection. I'm just not quite sure that this fabric has enough drama for the situation at hand. Mainly, we, we just, we need more of it. So I'm going on an adventure to the thrift store and then probably to the Walmart to gather all the materials that I need. So let's go get, okay, you know what? You guys probably get the idea. <laughs> First time going into the thrift store with my camera because my phone is broken and I've got to say, I feel weird. While at the thrift store, I ended up finding too many things not for this project and purchasing too much of it. But I did find a couple of things for this project too. I bought too much stuff. I found a bunch of stuff for like a December project that I'm doing though, so it's okay. Off to Walmart. At the Walmart, all I got was this zipper because they were out of that paint I needed, so I had to get it later. I'm sorry, this shopping trip feels very uneventful now. Also, if it sounds like I'm trying to drink maple syrup with a straw through my nose, it is because I have a cold right now, and I profoundly apologize for that. I am already such a nasal person, and anytime I get sick, it just doesn't do me any favors. <laughs> All right, so this is now what I have from the thrift store. I was surprisingly able to find a pretty decent amount of fabric for this, but it's still like thrift store fabric. So some of the color matching is a little rough, but I still think we did pretty good. I have two of these kind of giant red burgundy sheets that I'm going to be using for the skirt portion. And then two more red tablecloths that are pretty decently color matched. The reds of all things, surprisingly enough, are probably the most color matched of everything I got because the blues are, you know. But I did find this blue fabric yesterday whenever I I went and it's definitely much more of a spider-man blue it also has this sort of texture on it that kind of reminds me of webs i don't know i think it's going to add some visual interest to the project it's probably going to use this more as a statement piece and as much as i like this translucent fabric we're going to kind of figure out how to use that so that it actually blends in it's probably not going to be a focal point pretty good for all thrifted materials um now i have a ton of patterning to do because this is the next day so let's get started 
So to begin drafting a pattern for this ensemble, I just draped some old bed sheets onto my dress form and began drawing out panels for the bodice. I tried to cut them in a triangular, geometric way since spider shape language feels like it should be pretty sharp. And whenever I was pleased with that, I moved on to working with newspaper because I was out of fabric. I'm really saying quality and sophistication with my materials choices in this video. So I measured from my waist where I wanted the bottom of the dress to land on the floor, and then I began drafting out large triangular panels to get that mermaid look. I want the bottom of this dress to be fuller than my stomach after Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, yeah. So I repeated drafting out a bunch of those panels. I think in the end it ended up being something like 13 little panels on the skirt of this dress or something crazy like that. And while attempting to explain all of this to you, the executive producer set out to inspect my work as usual. She also became weirdly invested in this bag of baby carrots. Look at that. The love story of our age. Okay, hello. I'm thinking this is looking pretty good for like the main dress pattern. The bottom is looking a little bit boxier than I would like it to. However, in the main pattern, I've got those translucent pieces that kind of go here down the front so that I have like a leg slit without actually having a leg slit. So I have that for those, which will kind of round out the front. I'm thinking if I have enough of this fabric, I'm also going to put another one of those here and on the other side. So I'm also going to pattern out a couple of triangles to see how that looks. Then. I'm I think I'm going to fit the bodice. And this here is where that extra little triangle is. I'm thinking it's gonna be a decent size, but some of this I'm just gonna have to trial and error because it's it's all just a bunch of triangles. So then I quickly cut all of that out and fit the bodice pieces to my body. It was fitting okay, but kinda rough, not the most flattering. But I figured if there were any problems, I would just wig it and fix them later. And I wonder why I'm still not done with this video at the time of recording this. And in true executive producer fashion, as soon as she comes in, she's got to say on whatever project I'm working on. Hello? Are you a helper? No, you're not. That's right. Okay, we more or less have a functional bodice pattern now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start cutting things out because we kind of have to get the ball rolling here. And any problems that I encounter, I will fix along the way because I'm probably gonna encounter some problems. That's just the first draft of this bodice. Oh boy, but you know, it's fine. Let's keep going. Oh, look at that. I'm cutting something out. Oh, oh, look, more cutting. Oh, and what's that? Is it something new? Oh, no. Silly me. It's just more cutting. One eternity later. Okay, so I finally got everything cut out. Wow. There is so much sewing and assembly to do. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna start sewing. All of this here is just the skirt. And to provide myself with some much needed stress relief, while I work on this section of the video, I'm also going to be periodically working on a diamond painting kit, which was sent to me by the lovely sponsor of this video, Diamond Art Club. Diamond painting is a new DIY craft hobby that's like paint by number, but with colorful resin rhinestones. The final result is a sparkling mosaic artwork that shimmers and shines. This craft is great for all ages. You can do it on your own or with friends and family, and it provides hours of relaxation. Each diamond art club kit includes everything you need for the craft. All the tools, the colorful diamond rhinestones, a premium color-coded canvas, and other goodies like organizational stickers. All of their kits also come with a lifetime warranty and free insurance in case of spills or lost diamonds. The kit that Diamond Art Club sent me is called Black and White, and the instructions for digging right into this baby are super simple. Step 1. You just peel back the film, which can be held to the side with your trusty cover minder. Step 2. Select the symbol you want to work with. Step 3. Find the diamond bag that matches the color code and pour the diamonds into the tray. Step 4. You just press the tip of the magic applicator pen into the wax. And step 5. Use the pen to pick up the face side of the diamond. And finally, step 6. Then you just place your diamonds onto the corresponding symbol on the canvas. Then you are ready to enjoy hours of creativity and relaxation free of all sewing machines. Now listen, I have been having a week. I haven't been this stressed and overwhelmed in, in like a while. And I find that little repetitive yet productive tasks are actually really calming for me. It's actually why I've taken a bit of a liking to hand sewing recently. So this painting kit was like a wonderful calm break from my main project, the illustrious Spider-Man dress, which was stressing me out quite a bit at the time. And sitting down to do this meant that I could just flip off my noggin for a bit and do something creative and simple for once. It was just very relaxing, but also gave my my brain something to do while I watch TV and stuff because I don't know if you guys are the same but many of us creative folk we just 
can't help but use our hands to do something. But I only have so many brain cells at the end of the day to expend. So I will definitely be adding these kits to my list of calm energy activities to do, which if you know me, it's not a long list. This is the progress on my kit so far. I have been having such a fun time working on it and I can't wait to show you guys the finished product in a later video. So I highly recommend treating yourself to one of these kits to work on while you binge watch movies and sip a hot beverage this holiday season. And I can help you out with that. Because right now you can save 20% off your first purchase with Diamond Art Club by going to diamondartclub.com slash alpaca20 and using the discount code alpaca20. The link in discount code will be in the description. Diamond Art Club has tons of designs to choose from and they're all officially licensed to support artists. They have themes like landscapes, animals, and fantasy, and they even have popular character art from Harry Potter, Friends, Jojo Siwa, DC Comics, and more. So there is something for everyone. Thank you so much to Diamond Art Club for sponsoring this week's indulgence and providing a little craft for me to do. Now, let's get back to it. So to start getting this arachnid dress assembled, I pinned all of the outer bodice pieces together until it looked like a little Spider-Man heart. Then I just sewed all of those panels up and pinned together all of the front skirt pieces. Then I sewed those up and did a half-hearted attempt at a rolled hem on the bottom. And then it was just more pinning and then frantically sewing up more panels. And finally, you guessed it, more pinning and more frantically sewing up panels. Well, such riveting sewing content. But once I had this front bit assembled, I was very pleased with my work. Oh, who is she? It's Spider-Man. This is one of the most indulgent things I have made yet. It serves no purpose, it doesn't need to exist, and yet it does. I feel so very powerful right now. Yeah. It was at this point that I decided that in order to liven up the content, we needed to have a discussion about Spider-Man. Hi. I know I don't often speak to you guys in this way in these videos, but I'm just doing a lot of pinning and sewing, which I find to be profoundly boring, so I figured that we would have a little chat. I don't know what to do with my... Does this work? I figured that I would just use this opportunity to ask you guys about what Spider-Man means to you. Um, I don't know, ever since I was a little kid and I first saw the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, I've just been in love with them, obsessed with them. I dare say they are my favorite film franchise ever. In my 20s, something about a broke dork trying to make a living off of his art just kinda speaks to me. The films, they just, they have so much emotion, you know, and they're so sincere. In an age where everyone is just suffering from irony poisoning and sleep deprivation, I just find that some sincerity in my media goes a long way. And I cannot tell you how many times that I have cried over the Spider-Man films. I cannot tell you how many times something Aunt May said has literally brought me out of a depression. It sounds incredibly silly, and in many ways it is, but they just and I've tried time and time again to find a way to express my love for them. Last time this happened, I made a little animation video. This time, I'm making a very silly dress. So, um, tell me what Spider-Man means to you in the comments below. Who's your favorite Spider-Man character? Is it Spider-Man? She said yes. Um... Anyways, the last thing I did that night was do another poor attempt at a rolled hem on the weird hip pieces and try to cleanly press those down. It's day two or whatever, or at least I, I think it's something like that. As you saw, I made some pretty good progress yesterday. I got basically the whole front of the dress stitched together and kind of got some preliminary work for like the back of the dress done. But there's still like so much to do, honestly. There's still structural stuff to do with the bodice. Gotta install a zipper. Gotta stitch together the back pieces, make sure all of that fits. And then I also have to make the collar piece with like the sleeves and then also the long gloves. I'm not trying to do all of that today because that is ridiculous, but I'm gonna try to get as much done as humanly possible because it's Thanksgiving week and I am taking at least an entire day off to sit and eat turkey and hibernate. The producer is stalking something behind me. I don't know if you can see her, but she's like right there. All right, we have work to do, so let's get started. So the day began with, you guessed it, even more pinning. I'm sorry there's not a lot of variety at the moment, but more is coming. I just pinned and sewed up the rest of the skirt panels, except for the back. I'll do that later. And there was so much to get through that I sewed at the same speed that I'll be consuming turkey and stuffing on Thanksgiving Day. Can you tell I'm hungry when writing this? Once I was finished with all that boring jazz, I had the makings of an almost dress. Okay, now all the main panels for the skirt are put together. It is time to assemble the line 
designing and figure out the structural part of this. And I am going to try to add some boating to this garment with some zip ties. I've never used this whole zip tie method before, so I hope that it gives me the desired structure. Right now, the gown is seriously lacking in any of that. If all else fails, I also have a giant roll of canvas. And in all honesty, I'm probably just gonna use both. I want to be sucked into this gown. You know what I'm saying? But first, I gotta sew all this together, so I'm gonna do that real quick. White. So I quickly pinned all my lining pieces and sewed all those together, once again at Barry Allen's beads, and pressed all of my seams. Then it was time to figure out how to add structure to this bodice. So I began by pressing the seams on the outer layer of the bodice and pinning the booby cups into place so that I could top stitch them down. I went slowly for once so that I could actually top stitch on the seam, and this is what it looked like afterwards. So I then began cutting out pieces of canvas to add some structure to the seams of my lining layer. I used this method instead of boning on my strawberry bodice and it worked pretty well, but this wasn't providing as much stiffness as I wanted, so I cut an additional flat lining layer out of some spare fabric as well. Pin those pieces together, and then top stitch the canvas pieces onto the seams with some red thread. And once I did that, I decided I also wanted the zip tie boning, so I top stitched the boning channels on every seam, and this is what that looked like. I then just installed all the zip tie boning, which, can I just say, really made me feel like I know what I'm doing as a dressmaker. Even though this is literally my first gown, and those are zip ties, and I didn't measure anything. You know? It's the little things. I now bring you a brief intermission of a healthy loaf. All right. Okay, quick little update because I finally decided what I'm going to do with this. So I fully boned the lining. This is just a whole thing. I ended up really liking the aesthetic of this, just the stitching and how everything came out. And I just realized that I spent all that time doing this. And this is the lining piece. This is gonna be on the inside. So stay with me here. This is probably a little bit overkill. If you know me, then you know. I like structure. I'm just a late Victorian era type girly. So what I've elected to do is to repeat that entire process on the outer layer as well. I've already done the two <laughs> boning channels on the front and I'm doing the boning channels with canvas. I'm also going to put zip ties in here for more structure. Listen, I know it's overkill. I understand. It's probably too much. I hope it doesn't add too much bulk. The main reason I'm doing this is I like the look of corsety garments and I would prefer for this to look corsety. So that's about the size of it. I think she approves of my decision. So yeah, I repeated the entire process again on the outside, but it was worth it because I think it definitely made it look more detailed and it fits more the aesthetic of what I'm trying to do. It also strokes my ego. You know, the ego of putting plastic zip ties inside of thrifted curtains. Um, anyways, this is what it looked like at this point, complete with some Bully McGuire dancing. But wait, there's more. The last thing I did that evening was pin the lining and outer layers wrong sides together and very carefully sew them up, trying my best to avoid plastic bones in the process. I came so close to breaking a needle during this part and I am very happy to still have use of my hands. So then I flipped her right sides out, ironed those seams down, and this is where we were at the end of the night. And this is how I felt. Something about this is so funny to me. Oh. I'm sorry if tonight's process wasn't all that interesting, but so much of this project is just pinning and sewing together panels. I feel like there's only so much commentary that I can add to that process. <laughs> Hello, it's like day three or something. So today, I am hoping to finish this project. Is that overly ambitious? <laughs> Absolutely it is. But what am I if not an overly ambitious little YouTuber? Mostly, I think I'm just... I don't have realistic expectations of how long tasks will take me. That being said, I do hope to finish this today. We just have arm sleeve things, and then the color piece, and the back situation to figure out. I actually think that that's fairly realistic. I also have a bunch of other work to do on this video, like recording ads and whatnot, so there is that to factor in. I'm still gonna try to finish this today, so let's get started. And we are watching Spider-Man 2 because I simply cannot help myself. <laughs> So I began by whipping up two lovely Avatar Korra arm sleeves. Well, arm sleeves. I guess all sleeves go on your arm, but they- it's just for, like, your arm arm. Not your shoulder. 
I'm running out of tissues. So to make those, I just measured the length and circumference of my arm, cut out two pointed rectangles a little thinner than the circumference so they can stretch, then just hemmed the edges, you know, annoyingly because sewing stretch fabrics is the worst, and then just pinned and sewed up the side seam with a zigzag stitch. And the bada bing bada boom, we've got some arm sleeves, very good for walking around and acting like you've got very protruding shoulder muscles. I don't know what this accent is turning into. Now it was time to figure out the back of this baby. I just pinned that last back panel into the triangular slot, folding the squared sides in, and sewed that panel onto the rest of the frog. I then cut a slot for the zipper down the back. Now it's time to install our zipper. So I pinned the zipper into place, but then I ran into a bit of a problem. My back is too thick. So I've got my zipper pinned on and everything. I am just now dealing with the fact that my back is significantly wider than the back on my dress form here, and it is now causing problems. Got maybe half an inch, or it just would won't zip once it gets to like the middle part of my back. Might have to do a creative solution here. And after literally crying over Spider-Man 2, a movie I have seen literally dozens of times, it's actually embarrassing how emotional this film makes me. Um, anyways, this is the solution I came up with. Just a little triangular panel here and here, and hopefully this will solve my problem. So I finally sewed on my zipper, and this is what the full ensemble looked like so far. And finally, last, but certainly not least, it was time to figure out the collar situation. So even though my dress form has tiny little shoulders and I have, <laughs> you know, I tried to drape the collar piece on there in a foolish attempt to make things easier on myself, and uh, it, it did not. But nonetheless, I did drape and cut a working pattern, which I then cut outer and lining layers for while getting a little distracted by the opening credits for Spider-Man 3. I tell you what, watching these films was truly the only thing helping me survive this process. Oh, hell yeah. Because, in addition to my phone incident, I came back from my little vacation with a cold, which has left me feeling fatigued and delirious. So despite my best efforts in pinning, sewing, cutting, and trying to get the bulk of this color piece done, friends, I did indeed fail. And now it's the following night, and we're getting all of this done. So I cut out the little sleeve panels, right? We have weird sleeves too, did you almost forget? Cool, so did I. And I just pinned and sewed those suckers up, and I attached those to the main color piece, and finished stitching the main color piece. We have no no time to mince words here, we have tons of webs to draw on. So I, very hesitantly, began the process of painting on the raised webbing. I wanted to keep it as close to the Sam Raimi suit design as possible, but also try to keep it a little delicate to avoid clashing with the rest of the design. I repeated the technique on all the pieces, let them dry, and I also sewed on some hooks and eyes onto the color pieces, mostly off camera. Alright, the dress is finally done! Which means that it's reveal time. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's love letter to Spider-Man and pretty gowns. And as always, a huge thank you goes to my beautiful patrons, especially my executive producers. Lovisa, Corvid Dome, Eloquent Silence, Midnight Nova, John L, Meeks Hunter, Cleos, Blue, In the Galaxy, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Satoni, Sushi McNushi, Megan Penland, Owlian, Bean the Bread, Bobo McFoe, Gravity Drop, Hypnos, India, Jessica Dilling, Katie, Michael Twy Cross Panda Pie 365, Reflings, Silver, Sweet Winter Garden, Welly Kelly, and Will Schmidt. Thank you all once again for your support. It really does mean the most. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, well, that link is in the description. That is all for this week. For now, I leave you with Go Web. I'm gonna rub some dirt in your eye. You want forgiveness? Get religion. Gonna cry? My back. <sighs> it's better.